So at this point, I'm going to read the conflict of interest statement. Now, this applies to the grants that you will be, the applications rather, that you will be reviewing in the closed session. Uh, you must leave the meeting room when applications submitted by, our, by your own organization are being individually discussed. In the case of state higher education or other systems with multiple campuses that are geographically separated, own organization is intended to mean the entire system, except where a previous determination has been made that the components are separate organizations for the purposes of determining conflict of interest. You should avoid situations that could give rise to charges of conflict of interest, whether real or apparent. For example, you should not participate in the deliberations and actions on any application from or involving your spouse, child, recent student, recent teacher, professional collaborator with whom you have worked closely, a close personal friend, or a scientist with whom you have had long-standing scientific or personal differences. The NHGRI staff will determine the appropriate action based on recency, frequency, and strength of such associations or interests, either positive or negative, and will instruct you accordingly. In council actions in which your vote on a block of applications without discussing any individual one, the so-called on-block action, for example, your vote will not apply to any application from any institution fulfilling the criteria noted above. Please sign the conflict of interest and disposal of confidential materials forms, which are provided to you. They'll be collected at the end of the meeting. Okay, so we have one more piece of business that's not on the agenda. Won't take very long, don't, don't be frightened. Um, September is uh, what I refer to as parole month at NIH because it marks the last meeting of a group of council members that have served us for four years. And I think it's very good to have the new council members here because you get to see there is an actual end to your service. <laughs> it really does come to a closure sometime. So um, I'm going to uh, read some parting words and Eric's going to hand out uh, lovely parting gifts. We're gonna do this alphabetically and fortunately ladies first, Carol. Um, I have known Carol Bolt for almost 20 years. Uh, served many times on peer review panels for me and the last four years here on the council. And um, one of the remarkable things about Carol is you can assign just about anything to her. Informatics, databases, data science, mouse genetics, model organisms, trainings. Throw it at Carol and you'll get something thoughtful back from her. Um, I don't think I know anybody who smiles as often as Carol does. And uh, if you can smile at a council meeting and a peer review meeting, it says volumes about the kind of grace and poise that you bring to those meetings. So it's been a pleasure to work with you, Carol, and we look forward to continuing interactions with you. Okay, next up is Dan Roden. Uh, Dan, your no knowledge of medical genetics, genomics, uh, electronic health records, has been invaluable to the council and to genomic medicine, uh, the uh, evolution and, and really expansion of genomic medicine research at this institute. Um, one of the things I love about Dan is he's got a very hard not to be honest and straightforward method of communication. <laughs> Uh, more than once I've heard Dan say something along the lines of, oops, I forgot we were in open session. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I find that refreshing and uh, really appreciate that kind of straightforward candor. So thank you, Dan, and we'll see you at a workshop soon. <laughs> and speaking of straightforward and candid, Val Sheffield is next on the list. <laughs> Val is someone else I've known for a long, long time. I think you were on maybe the first committee that I, peer review committee that I ever organized back. Sorry. Yes, indeed. And um, lots of SEPs, special emphasis panels, uh, and somebody else who uh, very willingly speaks his mind. Um, Dan is the, uh, sorry, Val is the, I'm still stuck on Dan. Val is the classic uh, true physician scientist. 
Uh, I've met few people who care as much uh, passionately about the well-being of their patients uh, and have this profound intellectual curiosity to try to get at the underlying uh, molecular genetic events that underpin uh, disease. Um, Val's always uh, been the voice at the council table to remind us about the importance of um, investigator-initiated research projects. And uh, we're in the business of studying genetic diseases, uh, but Val also reminds us about how important the first step in that process is of clinician-based phenotyping. So um, Val, as I said before, look forward to working with you again. Okay, Jay Shanduri. Uh, earlier today, Jay discovered that uh, this was his last council meeting. <laughs> you should have seen the glee on his face. <laughs> I told him it actually hurt my feelings that that was his initial response. Um, Jay is a real Renaissance man, Renaissance scientist, covers many, many fields. Uh, we've used him and relied on him for a lot of technology development in a lot of fields that are important to genomic sciences. Um, but you can also throw production sequencing at Jay, uh, Mendelian disease, uh, massively parallel functional uh, analyses, uh, and again, get something very thoughtful back from Jay. So thank you very much for four years, Jay, and we'll see you again. So this has really been a terrific group of people to work with. Um, and uh, we say goodbye to the council venue, uh, but we know we'll see you again, if nothing else, at all the wonderful opportunities for peer review that are now available to you. <laughs> Thank you all. So I think you can uh, gavel us closed on the open session. We'll take about a 15-minute break and resume with the second closed session. Thank you. Very nice.